Hey. Feeling some energy come through in, you could say, response to a whole array of disparate things, things that aren't necessarily connected, though, of course, are all connected, and uh, involving further extraction, further ego, uh, you know, integration, ego that comes up and out when doing the kind of work that is talked about on the channel and that many of the viewers are doing too and can relate to. And, you know, it's, um, it's good. It's what needs to happen, but it's not always easy. <laughs> and in fact, sometimes it's really quite hard, relatively speaking. Um, and I'm letting the dog pull me around a little bit right now, so just got to deal with that. But uh, there is an acute awareness of a lot of the different ways that the Andrew character can be perceived. And it's both a blessing and a curse to be aware of those things because they are um, great material for extracting ego, but they are also suspect for ego to um, take hold. And sometimes in the content, in the delivery, it is either easy to interpret there being ego or there being ego. And in either case, uh, it's good news. <laughs> it's good news for the viewers and it's good news for the dissolution of Andrew. Because ultimately, what we're up against and what I'm working on some content to talk about <clears throat> is a greater degree of scrutiny around the kind of thinking that doesn't really, that thwarts our progress, that keeps us <clears throat> squarely cemented in duality and switch hands here and so just kind of taken off slow <laughs> but the kind of stuff that we're talking about and the kind of stuff that we're looking into is obviously <laughs> Um, radically polarizing to the thought structures of consensus society and the beliefs about what this all is for your average person. And the thing about it is, is that at one time or another, for the most part, you could say virtually every one of us has been your average person. And probably it's safe to say that most of us have been your average person for the majority of our life and then have discovered this, you know, spirituality, spiritual awakening, non-duality, enlightenment stuff, self-realization, um, you know, more recently. Or in the case of some of us, you know, in the, in the past few decades, we've been at it for uh, a while now. And 
you know so again it's there's a lot of awareness here around the wide range of different people who may be reaching my content or the content reaching them my content uh, and the different ways that it can be interpreted and also the different ways that the experience is expressed through Andrew which have a kind of wild range to them as we have seen if we watch Andrew and you know one of the ways that Andrew sees it is that there are times when Andrew watches the content and is disgusted by it, is sickened by it, and feels, you know, sickened by this sort of um, kind of limelighting effect that it appears is going on by way of Andrew making a lot of videos and Andrew talking a lot and Andrew, you know, going on and, you know, being big and audacious about concepts that you know, tend to typically be offered in a more subdued or kind of like traditional way, uh, or a more serious way, you might say. And so, you know, there's awareness on the sort of envelope pushing that's, that's taking place. And the thing to know is that it's both well, it's basically, it's unintentional, but it's natural. It is just the way that this character is. And it can be interpreted, even by him, <laughs> upon review, as, um, you know, dramatized, sensational, um, as put on as ego, you know, as uh, an act. And the thing about it is, it is an act. Because Haven's being really good. She's just standing still. But there are some strange people walking my way, so I may be moving. Uh, it's all an act. This whole thing is an act. Not just Andrew, but you and everything and everyone. Every Everything in this dream is an act. These are all costumes that we're wearing and we can change them up and we can have them be all sorts of different ways. And then those are going to, you know, invoke all sorts of different responses and reactions and experiences in the dream. But what is important to do for yourself as a viewer of Andrew's content or any content is to constantly be just checking in with your own intuition and heart. I really love the gut heart check. And so I learned this from a, a guy who used to be a business coach of mine. And he said, you always, he's like, don't, don't talk with your mind about this. Check in with your gut and your heart. And you basically ask your gut and your heart, like, do I align with this? If you have a decision to make, for example, is this decision a yes or a no? And you ask your heart, yes or no? Your heart will immediately tell you, you'll have a sense. Is it a yes or a no? If the heart says yes, then you check with the gut. Is this a yes or a no? If the gut says yes and the heart says yes, it's a yes, go for it. If the heart says yes, but the gut says no, wait because they need to be in alignment. And if they're not in alignment, you know, you're gonna wind up having an experience. Who knows what that experience will be, but this tends to be a fairly good barometer for, for you know, these sorts of things. So, uh, you know, where it relates to videos you're watching, information you're taking in, you know, if it feels culty, <laughs> if it feels, uh, you know, put on, if it feels like ego, if it makes you uncomfortable, if you feel challenged by it, if you feel like it's insane, then, and, and you know, just to, for the record, it's not like anybody's making these sorts of accusations to me. Um, this is, this is what, you know, is coming up for Andrew and his own ego and his own experience. Um, 
check in with your heart and your gut. Like, is this right for me? Yes or no? And if you get no's, then don't watch anymore. And I won't be upset or take it, you know, have hurt feelings about it. Because the thing is, is while there is no question that there is ego here, there is ego in every person. Person is ego, personhood is ego. There also is depth of understanding, not just conceptually, but experientially, that fluctuates and is not always, you know, there, there, there is, you know, you could say that this would be sort of egoic to say, but you could say that there is the aspiration that 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 ultimately there will be a point at which there's sort of a permi shift, a permanent shift. And, uh, you know, most if not all ego that arises in Andrew is dismissed and not attached to. And, and will that change the way that the character acts? Hard to say. Uh, some would argue yes, some would say not necessarily. Um, I tend to lean towards doesn't have to really have any effect because what is ultimately understood and experienced is that all of this movement, motion, Andrews and other people and, and everything in the world is only taking place simply out of a mental positioning. Literally, mind takes a position and upon doing so, life spawns, life comes alive. And upon mind dropping that positionality, it stops and becomes silent and still. And silent and stillness is, is what is right now. But all of this motion and movement and videos and non-duality and spirituality and whatever else, you know, friggin TikTok and the news and you name it, all that stuff is happening because of mental positionality, identification with certain thought structures, which then creates the effect of separation. And as soon as there's separation, then you can have things come to life. As soon as, as, soon as you take a position and then mentally separate yourself from other things, those things can start to move around you. But as you're as one with all of them, and in in you know complete and total oneness with all of them, where the mind has entirely dropped that, there is the experience of stillness and silence. The degree to which that takes place and occurs is really not anything that anyone, for the most part, can speak of, other than we can you know reference experience that we have, as well as experience that's been spoken about by, um, you know, those who perhaps have had much deeper degrees of it, like the great sages and, you know, some of the, the great enlightened beings of history. And they all still tend to walk around and do the duality thing just fine. So it would, it would make sense and appear, are you eating something? Okay. That 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 still goes on. But in any event, the experience here is one of further realizing just how substantial the dualistic thought system is and just how substantial it is fighting to keep fear alive. Just how substantial it is fighting to seduce anyone and everyone that it can into, uh, you know, ruling out uh, taking sides against, defending, defending against, um, protecting oneself from and ultimately living in a state of widely ranging misery, which the majority of us, Andrew included, have 
lived with for so long that we just assume that that's how it is and we don't even really call it misery. We don't even see it as misery. Hold on a second here. Uh, we just don't even recognize it. But this is where we've talked about as you start to do the work to clean out, you know, I talked in, in another video and I got this from, from someone else who, who offered the metaphor and it's a great metaphor is we start to clean out, and I call it a pool, the mud out of the pool and the pool starts to get clear all of a sudden we start to see just how much mud was in there. And when that happens, then when, you know, some more mud gets cleaned out of it and comes up, it's, it's substantial, it's significant. And it even expresses itself in, you know, sometimes chaotic ways, sometimes kind of wacky, insane ways as seen by Andrew. And, uh, what was I going to say about that? There will continue to be <clears throat> check-in videos like this one where it's the record button is clicked when there is a feeling of an opportunity to express deep vulnerability that can be hopefully felt in the heart as real and authentic. And that isn't at all to suggest that anything that I record is not real and authentic because it all involves just clicking record and talking. And in fact, I'd say that it's more authentic when it's just me and the camera than it is even when I'm in session with people because the ego tends to weasel its way into, uh, you know, old dynamics of self and other when interacting with people, whether it's one-on-ones or satsangs. Um, but, oh geez, Haven, no, we're not doing playtime right now. Oh boy. Okay. Gonna wrap this up here. There's a lot of traffic at the moment, foot traffic, and I want to give you back your Monday night. But essentially the message is that there's going to be some new content that's starting to be centered around deeper scrutiny of dualistic thinking because it's so normalized it's so conditioned that it's the stuff that we have literally woven into the fabric of our being that is kind of that final stuff that really sneaks its way into our experience and keeps us from, you know, further deepening our connection with the divine and ultimately self-realizing, self-actualizing, uh, and, you know, no longer enduring a life where fear is rampant in varying ways from insecurity to anxiety to depression to um you know jealousy competition whatever uh and and so it's that kind of thinking that we're going to be looking at and it involves you know just like literally thinking about time <laughs> you know making lots of plans, attempting to control fate, um, you know, sizing yourself up against others, talking about how certain people are certain ways, um, you know, evaluating interactions that ultimately enable this sort of uh, dichotomy of, is this person above or below me? Which is just supporting fucking ego. It's just helping dualistic thinking and ego to keep its hooks in us and ultimately keep us from, you know, achieving what it is we want to achieve, which is a return to sanity, which is our identity as perfect love which is no longer judging and seeing other, 
which is no longer believing in time, which is no longer worrying about what's going to happen to us, which is no longer trying to do God's job. Haven, uh uh-uh. But sometimes we have to give the mind a little tug on its leash when it pulls us into areas that uh, we're not wanting to go into any longer. And so we do. And that's going to be the direction going forward or more of it. And I hope that this was insightful and or helpful and or entertaining, if nothing else. And I wish you a, a, a wonderful Monday and we'll catch up with you soon. Peace.